Hello everyone. I am Dr. V. Mohan, Chairman and Chief Diabetologist of Dr. Mohan's Diabetes Speciality Center. And I'm making this presentation along with Dr. Rajalakshmi, who has kindly provided me all the slides. Dr. Rajalakshmi is the head of the medical retina at Dr. Mohan's Diabetes Speciality Center and the Madras Diabetes Research Foundation, Chennai. At the outset, I would like to thank the Tamil Nadu Ophthalmic Association, TNOA, for requesting me to talk to you. I realized that I am not an ophthalmologist, but a diabetologist, and I'm going to talk to you all about diabetic retinopathy and some solutions. In a sense, it's like carrying coal to Newcastle. However, uh, I have uh, two disclaimers, and that one is that I was married to an ophthalmologist, Dr. Rama Mohan, who was actually doing only diabetic retinopathy. And so my interest in diabetic retinopathy has been there for more than 40, 45 years now. And we have a whole team of ophthalmologists, Dr. Rajalakshmi is here, and uh, many others are actually listening to this particular uh, webinar. Uh, my whole team of uh, retinal specialists, and we kind of practice diabetic retinopathy, so to speak, as the single specialty within uh, the diabetes and eye scenario, although we do other things, we do cataract and so on, but our main focus both in research as well as in clinical uh, work has been on diabetic retinopathy. And that's the, the disclaimer that I'd like to make that I'm not an ophthalmologist, I'm not a retinal specialist, but I'm a diabetes specialist. So also in this talk, I'd like to present some of the work that we have done so that it would be uh, hopefully interesting and novel uh, as far as you are concerned. Let's start at the very beginning and uh, give you an overview of uh, the burden of diabetic retinopathy. We know that diabetes is increasing in our country. About 40 years ago, 2% of urban India had uh, diabetes and 1% of rural India. Today, it's 25% of the metropolitan cities like Chennai, Delhi, etc. And this comes from our own work. Uh, based on the ICMR in diab study, as well as the CURE study, the CUP study, and many other CAR study, and many others, where we have shown that diabetes has now become one in four uh, of all urban metropolitan cities in India. Now, as you have very high rates of diabetes, its complications also rise, and that will be one of the focus of this presentation. There is also a, a concomitant increase in prevalence of vision threatening complications, diabetic retinopathy. Naturally, if you have very large number of people with diabetes, even if a small number of them develop complications like vision threatening complications, then you have a huge burden of that. And if you actually put this in proper perspective, 90% of the vision loss due to diabetic retinopathy is actually preventable. These are the two sight threatening forms, as you know. Macular, maculopathy or macular edema and proliferative retinopathy leading to uh, bleeding, vitreous hemorrhage, retinal uh, re traction detachment of the retina. These are the causes of uh, visual loss or what you call as the sight threatening retinopathy. And what you should understand is that 90% of this is preventable because by good diabetes control and by keeping your A1C below 7%, uh, and by early screening for diabetic retinopathy, vision loss can definitely be prevented. Now, this is the burden that I was talking about. In the year 2015, these are from the uh, WHO and uh, I, uh, the uh, International Diabetes Federation IDF figures. In the year 2015, an estimated 400 million people uh, in the world had diabetes, of which assuming 35% had some form of retinopathy, 145 million people had some form of diabetic retinopathy and within that about 45 million had vision threatening retinopathy. Now these numbers of 415 million is supposed to escalate by the year 2040 to 642 million. There are some estimates which say 750 million people. Even if you take 642 million, then 224 million of them, assuming the same 35% will have some form of retinopathy and this 45 million in 2015 with sight threatening or vision threatening retinopathy can increase to 70 million people. Now 70 million people is actually the population of UK, 
the population of France, the population of Tamil Nadu, and so on. So that's a lot of people to have diabetic retina, vision threatening retinopathy in the whole world. Now, where are the, some of these data which come from? I'm sure many of you who are listening uh, in the audience will also have your own data. This is not an epidemiology talk, so I'm not showing all the studies which have been published. I know there have been excellent studies from the Aravindai Hospital, both uh, the Aravindai care system, both in the urban as well as rural Tamil Nadu. I know that there have been excellent studies from the LV Prasad, from All India Institute of Medical Sciences, and from many other institutes. What I'm showing here is just two studies. Uh, one was an early study which uh, Rama and colleagues uh, did um, called the CURE study, the Chennai Urban Rural Epidemiological Study. This is the I part of the CURE study, a large epidemiological study which is comprising of the whole of Chennai, uh, which was sampled. And in this study, we showed that about 17.8% of uh, the patients had diabetic retinopathy. Believe it or not, almost identical results were obtained from Shankar Netralia. This is uh, Rajiv Raman and colleagues from Shankar Netralia who showed that the prevalence of diabetic retinopathy in the Shankar Netralia uh, diabetic eye retinopathy uh, and molecular genetic study report, ASN DREAMS as they call it, study was also around 18%. Believe it or not, the same results were obtained uh, from uh, the Aravindai Hospital study as well as from the LV Prasad and almost every other study. Now, I mentioned a figure of 35%. Now, that is what the Western world reports. And in India, this prevalence of 18% has kind of come to stay because four independent studies showed the same thing. They all can't be wrong. So the good news is that the prevalence of diabetic retinopathy is actually lower in our population. But the bad news is that we already have 77 million people with diabetes. So even at 18%, that works out to 14 million people in India with diabetic retinopathy. That is three times the population of Denmark, just with diabetic retinopathy in India. So the fact that we have a slightly lower prevalence rate should not make us complacent because every fifth person in di with diabetes in India can have retinopathy. And these numbers of 77 million is set to increase to 134 million people in the next 20 or 30 years. That means about 30 million people can have diabetic retinopathy in India. Now, one of the problems, we, I said that 90% of retinopathy can be prevented. Then why are so many people developing retinopathy and how many, why are so many people developing vision threatening retinopathy? There are many reasons. The first is lack of awareness among patients that the retina can be affected. Very often people mistake uh, when you say that you need an eye test, which used to happen in the early days when Rama started the, her diabetic retinopathy uh, clinic. And we used to say, well, you come for diabetes, you go for your eye checkup. Oh, why should I go for eye checkup? I'll come here for diabetic checkup. Uh, then I just changed my glasses last week, so I don't need to do it again. So we used to say, sir, it's not a glasses test, sir, this is diabetic retinopathy. What is that? Then we had to show them the eyeball and say that the, you know, the cataract and the lens changes uh, and refractive changes come in the front of the eye. This is the back of the eye, the posterior segment we're talking about, and actually show them what the retina was and so on. And it took years for people to understand why a diabetic patient should have an eye test. They used to think simply for making money you're doing it, but that it's part and parcel of diabetes screening. It took years and decades to establish. And that's one of the reasons that they don't do it. And then they'll say, I've come driving. I'll do it next time. And the next time they come, will be after five years. By the time they're a lost. Like that. Then there's lack of symptoms like visual disturbances. We say that diabetes is a silent killer. When you get diabetes itself, you don't get symptoms. When you develop any of the complications, similarly, you do not get any visual symptoms until it is too late, until you develop the stage of proliferative retinopathy or the sight threatening retinopathy. And then, as I said, both diabetes and retinopathy can be asymptomatic. And unless advised by the physician, I would say, unless persuaded by the physician, the patient may not undertake, undertake a retinal examination, a dilated fundus examination or a fundus photograph. I'll just digress a little bit here and say that when Rema and I were in uh, UK, we worked in, under two different bosses who are completely opposite. One was Professor Eva Kona, who used to dilate every patient because she's the kind of guru of, or the queen of diabetic retinopathy. For her, it would be a blasphemy to do a fundus examination without dilatation. So we used to do that. And then we used to take pictures of the retina, the non mediatic camera had just come, I'm talking about 1984, 85. And then we had another attachment at the Ealing Hospital where a physician 
a diabetologist, Dr. Hugh Mehta, used to see his patients. And he used to always see undilated. Patient will walk in, he'll just have a quick look without him. Oh, yeah, it's okay, normal, and he'll go. So when we went there and when we started saying you have to dilate the eyes, he said, no, no it's all a waste of time. No, you don't do all that. You're just simply complicating matters. I've been doing it for years. So at that time, we got a camera, a non-midriatic camera, which came. And Eva said, you, uh, you kind of evaluate it at the Ealing Hospital. Because a lot of Indians used to come there from South Hall. And she believed that the color of the retina itself was a little different because the pigment being different. So she said, you take a lot of pictures there. So when I went to him, he, had, he showed me one and I said, can you send me some, some patients uh, for looking at the eye? And uh, he said, are you going to dilate? I said, yeah, we're going to dilate. Uh, then reluctantly he gave and he said, okay, here is one patient whom uh, I have seen last week and it is normal uh, retina. Now you dilate and see and see whether there's anything in it. He said, and he referred that patient to us. As luck would have it, I, when we dilated the eye, the patient had a huge pre-retinal hemorrhage, which he had completely missed because he had seen only the central portion, the disc only he had seen, and he had missed the little, little away from the periphery it was, little away to the periphery it was, and so he had missed this complete blood clot. That changed the way uh, the Ealing Hospital uh, then thereafter started, uh, you know, looking at the diabetic patient and every patient thereafterwards started getting their eyes dilated before the fundus examination. I'm just sharing the story with you. It's a true story just to tell you how even in advanced countries, a dilated fundus examination or a fundus photograph is not done unless the physician cares for it. Now, this is uh, some of the ways in which you can do the screening. Uh, you can do it in a physician's clinic. In an ophthalmologist clinic and retinal clinic, it may be different. But in a physician's clinic, you can examine the fundus if the, if the physician himself or herself uh, has the time and the skill and the interest and the ability to uh, dilate the fundus, then the patient and the physician can do it. Many of my fellows in diabetes whom I have trained are excellent in fundus examination because they used to go to the eye department at our center, to spend days there, keeping on looking at patients and they develop the skill. So many of them can do it. A physician can do it. If they can't do it, if they don't have the time, then they should refer to an ophthalmologist for doing the fundus examination. A retinal photography can be done by an eye technician uh, to document the lesions. And sometimes teleophthalmology can be done. Today, we are, it's a day of, uh, is the era of teleophthalmology. But even before that, I'm sure many of you uh, who are listening to this would have participated in rural telemedicine programs like we were doing, Shankaranathra was doing, Arvind was doing, many others were also doing. These photographs, of course, can be graded either from the van or from a telemedicine unit uh, or from the clinic itself can be graded either by the retinal specialist or you can even teach people, even technicians can be taught to grade. In one of the best centers for retinal grading in the world, the Wisconsin Diabetic Retinopathy a center which Ron Klein and Barbara Klein run, they don't do it themselves. They have taught graduates to do it. There are about 40 graduates who have been trained and they can do thousands and thousands of pictures. They can actually grade very, very, very accurately. These are only science graduates. They don't have any medical degree of any type. Now, this is uh, some pictures showing the, in the Chunampet uh, telemedicine van that we have, how the pictures are taken, and then uh, the once inside the van, the pictures are taken. We can also do ECG, biothesiometry, everything inside the van. Blood pressure can be checked. A1C can be checked. The weight can be checked. So it's a, like a virtual diabetes hospital. And this has worked very well in rural areas. So once the pictures are taken, then what we do is then we kind of zoom it back to the ophthalmologist uh, sitting at our center, this is in Gopalapuram where we have a telemedicine unit. This is Dr. Rajalakshmi doing this, Dr. Pradeepa, and all our ophthalmologists actually take part in the reporting of these pictures. This is one study which uh, we participated in. We had a collaboration with uh, the Emory University and other universities in the US. And one of the things that we did was we compared a non-midriatic camera with a smartphone, with a 20 diopter lens, with midriatsis, with the Zeiss midriatic camera. Now, this is the gold standard, as you know, the Zeiss. But you can see that you can get fairly decent pictures. What we try to see is whether a non-ophthalmologist or a non-technician can get pictures. So you can see that if you actually do it properly, you can get 
fairly decent pictures. And that was what we reported in the camera study. The camera study stands for comparison among methods of retinopathy uh, screening. Now, when the uh, smartphone fundus photography became available, now this is a big salute to the Indian uh, engineers and technicians who were able to reduce the price of the retinal camera. And I know that there's more than one, there are two, three different types of retinal camera compared to the conventional Zeiss camera, which is very expensive, very high quality, but also very expensive. Now these are very uh, inexpensive cameras made in India, but also have very good quality. So what we did here was, and this can be then used, a, a smartphone can be attached to this, and then you can capture the picture, and then you can send the picture out uh, to uh, you know various uh, uh, to back to the ophthalmic center uh, or a grading center where they can and this can be sent by WhatsApp or by email because from the phone you can send it. And you can see all our ophthalmologists here: Dr. Rajalakshmi, Dr. Arul Malar, Dr. Osha, Dr. Pratipa, Dr. Karimuddin. Uh, all of them have uh, taken part in this wonderful study, where, which was published in PLOS One, where we showed that the, uh, it, this low cost camera actually using a smartphone compares very well with the gold standard. And I think that is shown in the next slide. Uh, no, this slide actually is another one. So there we showed that the sensitivity and the specificity was not too bad. And therefore, even in a low cost center, you could do that. Now our center started growing. Initially we had only our Gopalapuram center and then we had our Annanaga branch and then we had our uh, uh, Tambaram branch headed by uh, Dr. Gupta, uh, the Annanaga branch where we had Dr. Mukumar, Kyle, Avidi. So we have all, uh, you know, we started slowly growing then outside uh, Chennai, we started going and then Dr. Shastri set up the Hyderabad center where Dr. Karimuddin works. So, and, and within those clusters itself, in Chennai itself, we have nine centers now, nine branches now. In Hyderabad, we have seven. In uh, Bangalore, we have five. Uh, so once we started having so many, we cannot have that many ophthalmologists. So what we started doing was again using telemedicine where one ophthalmologist or one center acts as a cluster uh, for all the pictures. Retinal. So we have retinal cameras in every diabetic uh, branch of ours, every center of ours. But then the pictures are taken uh, by a technician, usually a refractionist, a trained refractionist, who then sends a picture to one of these clusters, either in Hyderabad or uh, Coimbatore or Bangalore, Hyderabad, Chennai. So we have these uh, pictures coming in. Very quickly, the ophthalmologist is able to report on that and send the picture back with the report within a turnaround time of about 20 minutes or so, maximum about half an hour. So while the patient is waiting, the diabetologist gets the report from an ophthalmologist who's trained and thereby is able to tell the patient whether it's normal, come back next year, or you have mild uh, uh, non-proliferative retinopathy or moderate or severe or pre-proliferative or even proliferative diabetic retinopathy or sight threatening retinopathy which needs immediate laser treatment. I'll show you one case study about that. So this uh, uh, was published by Dr. Pradipa and Dr. Rajalakshmi where we look for in 2017, 22 branches of our center participated and about 11,000 people we were able to screen. By 2018, it increased to 25 branches and we had 14,000. We don't have the updated figures because this is published in 2018, 19, but now we have many more branches. We have 48 branches now, and the numbers are much larger than this. But even in this report, you can see 25,000 patients who otherwise would not have had access to diabetic retinopathy screened, and we're able to identify 25% of them who had diabetic retinopathy and about 2,000 patients who, need, who had sight threatening retinopathy who needed treatment who could be then referred. And all this was done using a low cost uh, remedial fundus on phone camera and through the images were shared through LAN network. Grading was done by seven retinal specialists at the different uh, centers uh, within uh, the country. So this is a kind of a model which we set up, which I think is quite unique for at least for a diabetes clinic, it's quite a unique service. Now the key challenges to widespread diabetic retinopathy screening, remember if you have 77 million uh, diabetic patients, all those 77 million people have to be screened, not once, but every year. That's a lot of work. And we have only 22,000 ophthalmologists uh, in India. Physicians, still most diabetic clinics don't even have an ophthalmologist. They don't even have a diabetic, uh, they don't even have a retinal camera, okay? 
And so how do we get this and how do we get the whole country, uh, every diabetic patient to be screened, okay? Even if after you do this, a trained grader is needed. You have to have so many graders. How do you get in client center? He's the world's uh, US uh, center of excellence for this way, managed to get 40 graders. How can every center have so many graders and so on? And then if the retinal specialist starts focusing on screening all the time, sitting and seeing pictures, they won't have time to treat. They won't have time to do the surgery. They won't have time to give the injections, intravitreal uh, injections and so on and so forth. So how can we make better use of this? And that's where artificial intelligence or AI comes in as the solution. Now, this is one of the first studies uh, from India where we looked at automated diabetic retinopathy detection, again using smartphone-based fundus photography. In this case, we used artificial intelligence to see how accurately it can predict or uh, it can diagnose diabetic retinopathy and the severity of diabetic retinopathy. And then we compared the specificity and the sensitivity of this. And as you can see, we did quite well in this particular study. For any diabetic retinopathy, the sensitivity was almost 96%. Specificity was 80%. For sight threatening retinopathy, it was 99% with 80% specificity. And for referable diabetic retinopathy, these are cases which should be referred to an ophthalmologist, 99.3%. So with artificial intelligence, with the retinal specialist grading as the reference standard, so that was a gold standard, AI is able to predict <clears throat> with almost 100% uh, sensitivity who should be referred. Now, sensitivity is more important. Specificity doesn't matter. If it's the other way around, you miss a lot of cases. That is bad. Here, the sensitivity is very good. You're not missing anyone. But of those who refer, then the ophthalmologist will say, no, no, this case really does not need to be referred. That's better. Actually, that's better because then you can reassure the patient and then send them off. So I think these techniques are coming to stay. And uh, even in India, all these are possible. That's what the study shows. Now, this is just one example of artificial intelligence and retinopathy real-time and telescreening. This is a 43-year-old male with type 2 diabetes, three years duration. He went to the Tanjavur unit of our center where there is no ophthalmologist. Uh, the visual acuity was uh, 66 N8, no specific eye complications. He underwent retinal photography using this uh, fundus uh, on phone a camera, when the images were sent to our hospital, the images were also uploaded for the AI diagnosis. The diabetologist had the AI assisted diabetic retinopathy uh, available with him immediately, and this asymptomatic patient was immediately referred for FFA, OCT, and timely laser photocoagulation. So, thanks to artificial intelligence teleophthalmology, we were able to service this patient. This is just one example of many such patients whom we have picked up. Now, what are the steps to reduce the diabetic retinopathy burden in India? This is a kind of a summary of what uh, we just said. And so you can use the Remedio Fundus on phone uh, uh, camera, and then you can use teleophthalmology. The consultation can be done through video conferencing, even to remote centers as we do. Artificial intelligence can be used right on the uh, mobile phone itself. It can tell you in a few seconds whether there is retinopathy or not, and whether it needs to be referred or not. So if you put all this together, then that it becomes the artificial intelligence solution uh, or a total package for diabetic retinopathy. And this is a, uh, an editorial which uh, Dr. Rajalakshmi wrote uh, in the I. One more study which I wanted to present to you is that because we are a diabetic center, we know that vitamin D deficiency is very common in India. We also first showed in one study uh, which uh, Dr. Jayashree uh, did, that's part of her uh, PhD thesis, she showed that the vitamin D deficiency is more in pre-diabetic patients compared to normals and even more in people with diabetes. Uh, so then we had a, uh, a student from uh, Emory University who came, who wanted to look at diabetic retinopathy and see whether vitamin D deficiency is more. And of course, lo and behold, we found that vitamin D deficiency was associated with two times increased risk for developing proliferative diabetic retinopathy. This is published in Diabetes Research and Clinical Practice. Uh, very recently, uh, Dr. Raj Lakshmi and colleagues, uh, this time working with Dr. Shobha Shiva Prasad uh, uh, from the UK, we have looked at our data uh, in great detail using our large database. We have a database, as you know, uh, we have the largest 
electronic uh, records for diabetes in the whole world. We have close to half a million patients, 500,000 patients almost now, and followed up for 20 years. And from day one, we had electronic records. So this is by far the world's largest uh, diabetes electronic records. So one of the questions with uh, Dr. Shobha Shivaprasad uh, wanted to do, this is a part of Indo-UK collaborative uh, study called as the Ornate Study, and Shankar Netralia is also part of this. Rajiv Raman is very much part of this. So in this study, we looked at 19,000 patients, and the qu simple question we asked is, where there is no ophthalmologist, how can a physician predict using biochemical tests who will have proliferative diabetic retinopathy or sight-threatening retinopathy? And it turned out that by looking at the renal function, albuminuria lowered the EGFR, which is the as an estimate of the diabetic kidney disease. You are able to predict that people with diabetic kidney disease and or presence of albuminuria uh, had a five times higher risk of developing sight-threatening retinopathy. And these are done routinely. Albuminuria and uh, the estimation of EGFR, serum creatinine, these are done routinely in a diabetic clinic. So at least if that, if you don't have a fundus camera, you don't have that kind of facility, at least looking at this, you should be able to say that he has some kidney disease, therefore I should be also affected and therefore refer the patient. And this is a very important paper just published in the BMJ Open Diabetes uh, Research and Care. We can also look at the feet. If the feet has definite evidence of neuropathy, trophic ulcers and so on, we can say that this patient probably has a diabetic foot eye syndrome, what we call as. So these are all markers which we use in a diabetic clinic. You don't even have to go that far. Just look at the, uh, look at the shin area. And if you see brown spots, what we call as diabetic dermopathy, it's a very good marker of diabetic retinopathy. Finally, there is also what is called as limited joint dis, uh, mobility, or uh, when you put your hands together, it's called as a prayer sign. If you're not able to put them together, but it's like this, it means you have limited joint dysmobility and such patients, uh, chirioarthropathy we call it, those patients have uh, more of diabetic retinopathy. So these are all markers that we use as a clinician to predict who will have diabetic retinopathy. Uh, so this is uh, my last official slide to tell you that uh, it's a kind of summary to say you can protect your vision from, da from damage, from anything damage due to diabetes by what is called this uh, uh, eponym called as TRAC. TRAC stands for take all your medicines regularly, retinal examination annually, uh, add healthy diet and physical activity daily routine, control blood pressure, sugar and cholesterol, and kicking the smoking habit. So if you're using this TRAC, you can actually prevent diabetic retinopathy. So the most important thing is, uh, the world is beautiful. Do not let diabetes prevent you from seeing it. Have your eyes checked periodically. Uh, and these kind of messages, these kind of posters, if they are put up in diabetic clinics, also in general ophthalmology clinics, which may not be a retinal clinic, then more and more patients will ask for their eye test. And by this, you can actually prevent uh, diabetic retinopathy. At least you can prevent the sight-threatening retinopathy. Uh, this uh, presentation comes to you from Dr. Mohan's Diabetes Specialty Center. This is our headquarters in uh, Gopalapuram. As I said, almost 500,000 or half a million diabetic registered patients we have at our center. It's the world's largest electronic record system. We have 48 branches in eight states of India. Uh, these are the states, West Bengal, Odisha, and all the southern uh, states, including uh, Puducherry. And uh, we have currently 130 consultants and 1,400 uh, staff. We have 60 inpatient beds. And these are our contact details. In case any of you want to write to us for further clarification, you can write to us at drmohans at diabetes.ind.in. I also wanted to end with the slide by telling you that uh, I am on um, social media. I'm a recent entry into this. Uh, I thought that we should not lose out the people who use social media to carry correct messages uh, to them. And uh, particularly in, on YouTube, I have a number of uh, videos which may be of interest to you. They're very short videos, two minutes, three minutes, to the point. It talks about immunity, it talks about vitamin C, it talks about vitamin D, it talks about COVID, it talks about everything that you needed to know. It talks about, uh, you know, ambulatory glucose profile, a method of measuring continuous glucose uh, uh, measurements. And so I'm going to stop there and uh, request you to keep in touch with me. I'd also like to thank the Tamil Nadu of Thalmic uh, Association, TNOA, for this opportunity given to me. I'd like to thank Dr. Rajalakshmi 
for her help with the slides and thank all our ophthalmologists for the great work that they have been doing in making a diabetic center a, a, a retinal unit as well. It's a unique example and I pay a rich tribute to my late wife, Dr. Rama Mohan, who set up all this and trained most of the ophthalmologists who work with us. I'd also like to thank all our diabetologists who do such a great work. Finally, I wish all of you happy uh, times uh, and healthy times as we go through COVID. Remember that COVID only affects a very, very small percentage of the population. And my message is to tell you that you are very, very, very unlikely to get COVID. You are almost impossible that you are going to die due to COVID. So remove the COVID fear, remove the COVID, uh, uh, you know, the paranoia that you may have uh, or the fear that, uh, that you have and uh, stay healthy, look after your patients and I wish you all the best. Thank you very much.